I want you to do something in your personal life that's more than what you usually do. If you vote and you go home, that's not enough. There's no problem with helping at a telephone bank or stuffing envelopes, or if you don't want to get formally involved, just walk down the street, talk to some of your neighbors who you know are fairly conservative or likely Republican, and encourage them to vote. Go down your email list or your, your saved phone numbers and text people. We need you to get involved in your own way. You know how to do this. You sit at the dinner table or breakfast table. Most people say, we need to do X. We means nobody's going to do anything. And it may be fulfilling emotionally, but it's not going to it's not going to get us where we need to go. We have got to crush in this election. We've got to win. We've got to crush. It's up to each and every one of us. And in order to get you even more motivated and inspirited, if you're not, and I think you are, but even more so, I want you to think when you listen to what I'm going to play for you about Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War, I want you to think about the Revolutionary War. I want you to think about World War II our men and women in uniform today who are in combat areas, the men and women who fought in Vietnam and Korea and, and so many other places in the Middle East. Think of these people and all they gave up. Think of these crucial battles, Lexington, Concord, Yorktown. Think of Gettysburg. Think of the Battle of Iwo Jima. Just think of all these crucially important battles and all the people who gave their lives and sacrificed their limbs so we could be free. They sacrificed everything. We're up against a bunch of Marxist punks. All we're asked to do is vote and to get out as many people as we can to vote. That is my request of all you Levinites out there. Let's do more than we normally do. Yes, vote. Yes, vote early, early and spend the rest of the time trying to get some other people to vote too. And you're going to feel so fulfilled and so patriotic and so happy because you're going to make a difference. And let me tell you, some of these races can come down to a few hundred votes and we do not want to throw it to the Democrat judges. Some of these races can come down to a few hundred votes. I don't care if they're congressional races, Senate races. You've seen it happen before. And some of these races are paper thin. You can make the difference because you're Levinites and even more, you're patriots. So take a listen to this and get even further inspired. Go. The Battle Hymn of the Republic, and this is the U.S. Army Field Band.
fantastic. If that doesn't fire you up, nothing does. I listen to that, I'm thinking about Abraham Lincoln. I listen to that, I'm thinking about Dwight Eisenhower and Patton. Think about the founding fathers. We have a great history. Music like this isn't played enough. So we need to be invigorated, the people who love this country. As I've told you before, this is a campaign between those who love America and those who hate America. When you listen to a song like that, you think about it. There have been generations before us, including your ancestors in many cases, who have sacrificed everything. And the people who are tearing down this country have sacrificed nothing, nothing. They live in the Ivy Halls, the Ivy Leagues that you and I pay for. They have tenure, so competition doesn't matter. They use their positions to push their sexuality. They use their positions to push their, their bizarre radical ideology. They use the position to push their racism as critical race theory. And they have their politicians in Washington, we call them Democrats. The Democrat party is an evil party, it's done evil things in this country. Battle Hymn of the Republic was played often by the Union as they would march into war. There wouldn't have been a war but for the Democrat party, would there? The Democrat party that supported slavery, the Democrat party that supported segregation. The Democrat Party that supported eugenics. The Democrat Party that supported Jim Crow and all kinds of obstruction to voting. It's a very evil party today. Now it's moved hard left. It's a Marxist party for so many reasons. Redistribution of wealth, attacking capitalism, attacking business, regulating people's lives from Washington, D.C undermining free will, independent liberty. As I said the other day, Ronald Reagan used to ask the question, are you better off today than you were four years ago? And the question today is, are you better off today than you were 20 months ago? And let me tell you a little secret. If they win and we lose, or if we don't win by a big margin, it's gonna get worse. Just remember the last bill they passed, they said it was build back better small. Small? Oh, they have a lot more plans for you, for your livelihoods, for your lifestyle, a lot more plans. And I often wonder, a lot, what's gonna happen to our children and our grandchildren under these conditions? Whether it's financial and economic, we're bankrupting ourselves. You will saw the uh, Army band there, the Army field band. What's gonna happen to the Army and the rest of the service branches? The wokeism is just so destructive from within, and it's being imposed on our soldiers from the top brass and from the so-called commander-in-chief. What is this country going to be like for your grandchildren and for generations yet born? Well, that's our responsibility. That responsibility falls on our shoulders from the classroom to the border to Washington, D.C. Voting is just, it's just the beginning of the process. We've got to have a majority in order to have a foot in the door. And then we gotta hold the Republicans accountable and hold them responsible because too many of them, like Mitch McConnell and his boys, they don't see things the way we see them. They're perfectly happy just being on top of the pyramid and, and ruling like a bunch of, uh, well, nitwits. We've gotta push back, we have to expand liberty. We can't just manage what's been handed to us anymore. And if we don't win, you can say goodbye to the independence of the courts. You can say hello to four more Democrats in the Senate. You can say goodbye to the filibuster, which is the only thing that stops 50-50 Democrats in the Senate from pushing every aspect of their agenda. You can say goodbye to American sovereignty. I don't know how many more years we can tolerate two billion illegal aliens coming into this country. Fentanyl coming into this country by the ton, killing our young people. I don't know how much more we can tolerate one generation after another being ignorant because the teachers don't teach. They expose and they exploit. I don't know how much more we can tolerate any of this. Inflation, gasoline prices, the uh, sabotaging of energy independence from within, and all the other ideological efforts that have been undertaken which are destroying this country. That's what's at stake. In other words, everything's at stake. 
whatever it takes to motivate, then motivate. But it seems to me when you think about this stuff in a sober way, that we're awfully lucky to have an election in less than three weeks. Can you imagine if it was another year or two away? We can thank God that we have an election in less than three weeks where we can at least begin to do something about this. And for those of you who live in districts which are marginally Republican or marginally Democrat, or those of you who live in districts where you have a Democrat who won a slight victory two years ago or four years ago or six years ago, and they're still there, and they claim to be moderates. I've seen them in northern Jersey, in Virginia, in Michigan, in New York, in Pennsylvania, parts of California, all over the country. There's no such thing as an elected moderate Democrat anymore. Every damn one of them voted for 87,000 new IRS agents, every single one of them. And every damn one of them voted for phony climate change, which is socialism, economic socialism, which is a degrowth movement, and you're suffering as a result, and you're going to suffer a whole lot more. The war on fossil fuels has to stop. There's only one party that is destroying the country. It's the Democrat Party. The Republican Party is not perfect. It's got serious issues. But at least its objective isn't to destroy the country. That clearly is the objective of the Democrat Party. Just think about this. These Marxists, which party did I identify with? The Democrat Party. Who did they vote for for president? Joe Biden. What judges do they support? The judges appointed by Democrats. What policies do they support? The Democrat policies. They want them to go further, but it's only in the Democrat Party where they have power and a voice. So this extremism and radicalism is the Democrat Party. That's what it is. And so we only have one opportunity right now to confront this in the way the Constitution provides apart from Convention of States, one immediate way to address this. And again, you need to ask yourself, look in the mirror or look in the imaginable mirror. What else can I do? Because by God, if you don't do it now, when are you gonna do it? Want to see more? Sign up for Levin TV.